Um, the title of the show is the title of the show because I decided that that should be the title of the show. And it's spelled, it's not spelled wrong because, you know, like people think it's the neighbor, but it's the neighbor, a word that doesn't exist. You know, it makes no sense. But it looks like it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense. And that's the point. You know, like you can just do idiotic things, like throw a stone at a policeman, cross the light, the, cross the, the pathway while there's the red light on. You can do these things, you know, you can have dirty hair. It's totally accepted, you know, just because they tell you not to follow, they tell you to follow the rules. I tell you, don't follow, follow the rules. <laughs> If something is spelled banana, you just call it bonono. It's totally okay. You know, that's the artist way. Whoop! Uh, I mean, I did a lot of like underground bands, sleeve designs, posters, advertisements, and I never considered them art. That's the difference. I thought art is about not fulfilling a purpose. You know, like you could say, even if it's underground, there's graphic, there's visuals that function as an advertisement for something. And then there's graphics that function as no advertisement for anything else than itself. And that's the difference between art and graphics. And I was, interested in doing that. I was, um, I didn't, the thing is, I didn't know what art is and I wanted to find out. I knew what a comic book is and I knew what a poster is and I knew what a good design is, but I couldn't really sit, couldn't really understand the difference. And I wanted to understand the difference and enter this uh, free space of art. I didn't, you know, that, that's it, you yeah, know, that's it. You know, in the 90s, when I, I started studying, there was a, a huge wave of criticism towards the white space, and there was a second wave of feminism, and there's a lot of performances, and actually not a lot of painting, but I didn't know that. I thought everybody would be super interested in painting. I was really believing that. I couldn't understand that. The things the others did were like just, yeah, they do their things, yeah, but who cares? It's not painting. So it was. Actually, it was a misunderstanding. I thought, and I still think, painting is the backspin of every artistic uh, procedure. That a lot of people think that's not true, but I thought it's true. And once I went that way, I couldn't turn around anymore, you know? And then also, I like working alone. I like not working with others. I do not like others. I want to be away from others. Others annoy me, the others are in the way, and that leads automatically to painting as an artistic practice, you know? Because when you do performance or video or photo, you're always relying on somebody else. There's always a cutter, a sound man, there's an audience that wants to see you for real, you know? While in a painting, you do the painting, the painting is somewhere on a wall, people look at it, and it doesn't matter if you're a dwarf, an idiot, black, white, green, or well, I think it shouldn't matter. I know it does, but um, yeah, that's, I think, the main advance of the whole painting thing. I don't know, I changed my artistic, or my my choices, I changed my choices, can you say that? No, I, I, I changed my, my styles, but not my method. And the method was, you think about something, you do it, then while doing it, you understand what you're doing, and then it gets kind of boring. And then you have to be confident enough to change. So you, so you 
once you achieved something, for me, it gets boring to follow that for a long time. I mean, I started a new group of work five years ago or six years ago, and that was a, how can you say, it was a entering a field where I felt quite alone, which was great. And I could do whatever I want, and then, you know, while through the process of doing, I entered fields that I couldn't have thought of before. And I, I think that's, uh, I think that's great. But mainly it's, I think, also boring. I, I don't like to be bored. It's boring to do things you have already done. Or maybe, maybe it's just also a genetical disorder, you know, like nervousness or something. Ah, you need to do something. Ah, you know, maybe, you know, others maybe never change and that's also fine for them. Maybe, um, maybe they are just more, maybe they are just different, you know. It's a different tradition, you know. I'm, I'm a neurotic person, like in a nice way, neurotic. Nice neurotism, yeah. The social role of art is, it sounds super boring and kind of redundant. The main role of art is to be art and The social role of art or its political content is defined by the surrounding of that. In a situation where everybody expects you to paint the leader, it may be subversive to paint a still life of flowers. Still life of flowers in a free society is boring. So in societies that are like, let's say, quite liberal and open-minded, art has another function. It may be just a decoration in the brains of people It may also be something that just kind of, whatever, upsets you or brings you towards a process of thinking about things that you have never thought before. For me, the main role of art is, for me, to surprise me, to, to think the unthinkable. Like when you hear music you never heard before and it kind of touches you. It's an interesting, it's not only a revelation, it also forces you to consider your thoughts, emotions, you know, like the cliches you think and all that. But honestly, for around about 10, 12 years, I focused on social and political issues because I thought it was interesting and important. And then at some point, I didn't have to say anything about it anymore. You know, and you don't want to start copying yourself. You don't want to be like your own parrot, that's just like repeating the same 15 sentence all over and again. And, then you have to establish a new language also with um, certain formal choices, you know, uh, that certain formal choices relate to certain issues. It is very hard to be focusing, let's say, on the ambivalence of repression in a society and painting that in an absolutely non-figurative way. So there is, there's always limitations based on the narratives and once you leave the narrative behind a little the freedom of doing whatever you want on the canvas gets bigger which is kind of enjoyable for me maybe also for others i don't know Um, I title my work um, always after I painted the painting and it is based on a, um, a level that is similar to what's to the painting, I think. Which means I decide decisively and spontaneous and without any really good reason why I name this painting Galumbo. In that moment, Galumbo makes total sense. Uh, also because it sounds good. But I honestly, the moment I named the, the painting, the painting is free to go and I don't think about the title anymore. I cannot remember the titles of my painting. It's, it's like, Children, they grow up very fast, then they're 18 years old, and then they leave home. And then you just forgot their names. 
What was my child called again? Was it Hans? Was it Peter? Was it Ingrid? I don't know. Hello Hans, hello Peter, hello Ingrid. Go, roam the world. Free, free nations. Um, save the dolphins. You know, do that. Forget about it. I can't remember your names. Don't knock on my door again. Please, painting. Stay outside my studio because there are other studio paintings now. Now there's new paintings in the studio. They don't want to be bothered by the old paintings. Therefore, give them a name, and a name is like a goodbye. Yes. That's it, I think. My recent interests are hating the term, the turn of nowadays politics. I hate Corona, I hate the Ukraine war, I hate the political system, I hate conservatives, I hate all that dumb shit that is going on on this planet. It's like shitty Mad Max part 15 becoming reality. It's such a depressing, unutopian, boring, stupid shit that I do not want to bother with it in art. My art is about optimism. My art shows you can fight against depression. It is really important. Do not let them win. Don't be turned into a melancholic teenager. Do not do suicide. Take, peel your nose and say, fuck off. Yes, but like good mooded, you know? Good mooded, fuck off, yeah. And that's it, I think. I mean, I don't know if people see that in my painting, but that's what I feel, you know? Thank you. Is it okay if I peel my nose with two fingers? Okay. That's a complicated question. I mean, um, it's, for, it's definitely true that there's a similarity on the level of that Germany was divided and Korea is divided. But it would be very, it would be quite superficial to relate the dingo dongos in North Korea towards the boring socialism of the former GDR. So uh, the impact it had on me when I was young was that with the decline of the Berlin Wall, I understood that uh, a whole society changed. And I thought the world I lived in, also politically or ideologically, changed so much that I also needed to change. Actually, you could even say the fall of the Berlin Wall uh, is the reason for my uh, decision to become an artist. Yeah. But honestly, the whole... I think these conflicts are way too complicated to ask an artist about it, because most artists, and this includes me, are just like not that intelligent, you know? and and. I think it's all, it's bad, it's a bad situation, you know. The visitors that see my work should be enlightened and they should enjoy it. And if they don't enjoy it, they should just leave the show and do it better. It's like when I see a good painting of another artist, I look at the painting and I think, I take this as a challenge and I want to do a better painting than this. And that's what all the visitors should do. They should go home if they don't like the show and do it better. And if they like the show, they should also go home and do a better painting, you know? Change the world with better paintings. No more war, better paintings. Is that too much asked for?